I'm ready. Hey, I was on my phone, you know, getting on the Zoom call. This is like a live Zoom call thingamabobby. I can't hear it. Right, KJ, oh, KJ go. go ahead, open us up. Um, Tom, with the second semester uh, starting up, do you expect any uh, additional roster uh, or additions to the roster here uh, for the second half of the season? Um, with the, what do you, I mean, ask the specific question. Do you have any wrestlers joining the roster for the second semester? We do not at this moment. Uh, with Ben Keeter, with football being over, is there any kind of timeline for him, um, and kind of getting into the groove and maybe seeing time in the lineup? If it was up to him... Um, he would have went yesterday, uh, very eager, very eager, and we love it. Hild's doing a great job. Um, the more the merrier. We love it. Mike, go ahead. Um, hey, Tom. Are you able to comment on what happened with A.J. Ferrari the other night at Soldier Salute, and, or what were the status of his recruitment is? You know the answer to that, Mike. You've been doing okay, this. I wasn't You've been sure. doing I wasn't this sure. a I just long to... time. You've been doing this a long time. Okay. So, okay. I just want to make sure on that. All, one thing I do want to ask about the soldier salute, though, you had several of your wrestlers face each other. The other night, you seemed to talk about that was a positive thing. Why is that? It's how we choose to operate. Um, this is a highly competitive. Um, level of wrestling and we have guys that come here um, to wrestle at the highest level and to position themselves to win championships and nothing is handed you have to earn it it is very competitive to make the team it's not about making the team it's about being the best guy that can wrestle and compete for a national championship it's always been that way. Um, when I first came here in the fall of 1987, it was that way. When I was a true freshman and I saw it with my own eyes, wide open, watching it happen right in front of me with Gable's teams. Um, it's just how we, we choose to go about it. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Eli, go ahead. I guess with Ben Keeter officially joining the room a little bit after the bowl game, what have been your initial impressions on just where he is and how ready he can be to hop in the line of winning, maybe called upon? As you know, this is a unique sport um, with preparation. Um, he's a very eager uh, guy. And like I said, we love it. And we'll see when the best time to plug him in there is. And, and you know, you remember we have – you know, Bradley Hill in there. So this is a process. I guess what are the things he needs to show to you, in your opinion, coming from football to wrestling to kind of have, like, you're like, okay, he can be that. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't think there's specific things that like come to my mind. Um, I said, it's a process. It's kind of like, um, when I say it's a process, it's kind of like the eyeball test. What does he look like? Those types of things. I don't think there's anything specific that you're checking off as we get closer and closer to competition. And obviously, PK, Caliendo, they square off the Soldier Salute at 165. What have you learned from that match and seeing PK at 174 in the projected lineup? Is that maybe a potential permanent spot for him going forward this season, kind of wrestling up at 08. I think that Caliendo solidified himself at 165. Um, you know, we still have um, a great asset for our team, a great attitude, a great worker, a great teammate, and Patrick Kennedy. And we also have Gabe Arnold at 174. Um, we have a lot of options there. We love all those guys. 
And I, you mentioned Gabe as well. Catching up with him in the Soldier Salute, he said he's willing to be plugged in anywhere. I mean, could, seeing him wrestle at the Cy Hawk at 184, is that an area you could look at in the future potentially? He's an enthusiastic competitor, and we love it. We love that attitude. Thank you, Tom. Hey, Jay. Uh, given Ben's accomplishments um, in the past, seeing Gabe step in and have success, do you see a similar potential there with with Ben if he were to step in there at heavyweight? Um, I mean, he won an age group championship, U20, world championship. He made the team U20, uh, very competitive um, coming out of high school. And we love everything about him. So to make a prediction, though, I, I'm not sure um, you're going to get that out of me. Um, I'm not really a prediction-making guy. Um, but I'll tell you what. I like what's under the hood with Ben Keeter. Now that January is starting um, and you're kind of getting into the Big Ten season, how much of the lineup is still fluid or are you kind of getting <laughs> things set? As we go forward, we will know more every week, every weekend, every competition. Um, this is a very unique year. There has been a lot of steps that have happened um, to get through, to get to this point, um, starting back in May. Um, and we've waded through them. We've been patient. And we're going to continue to do the right thing, the best thing for each individual, um, what's best for the individual, what's best for the program, and keep going forward. That, that's how you do it. There's no, there's no deviating from just a basic, solid approach. No Nebraska is Friday, but a Monday you have Minnesota. It seems like kind of a rare Monday duel. How did that kind of come about to be uh, a Monday uh, night duel? Originally, it was on Sunday. It got moved quickly to Monday. I think it's something that they want to make um, room for. I don't think there's a lot happening on Monday for the Big Ten Network. Um, it's a great way to see how this works. And I know Penn State is, the, I think, the early slot with Rutgers maybe. Not sure exactly. Um, but there's back-to-back -back duels there on that Monday night. It's Martin Luther King Day. Um, a lot of people are off work. I mean, it makes sense to me. Let's see how it works. Let's see what the numbers come back on the television. I think those are both live duels. Those aren't, um, those aren't BTN Plus. They're uh, linear, they call it. And then my last question, does that affect the routine? I know you have a lot of Friday, no, you put Sunday, a, Friday. You, no, you put a, no, it was not like it was last week where they changed it. I mean, we've known about this for a long time and. Um, originally, we're Friday, Sunday, we go. If it's Friday, Saturday, we go. If it's two on Friday, we go. If it's Friday, Monday, we're, we're ready. Thanks, Tom. All right, Eli and then Ross, you'll uh, wrap us up, okay? With uh, Nebraska coming up on Friday, there's a lot of really good opponents down, up and down their lineup. What are you looking to learn from guys like Ayala or Frannick who have some really high-profile matchups? Um, Learning is a funny word because we're looking for performance. Um, we're looking for these guys to step out and compete like they want to compete. Wrestle your best match. Stay in your best positions. Do what you do best. Control what you can control. Um, and that's part of the preparation. Um, you know, you, you mentioned a couple names there, but really you could mention 10 weight classes. And that's what we want to see, a ready state of mind. Go out there and wrestle your match. Do what you're capable of doing, and things will take care of themselves. If each guy gets ready, you know, it's, 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 wrestling's a funny deal. Um, and wrestlers know that, and people that are in wrestling know that, and fans of wrestling know that. Um, but sometimes it has to be repeated that wrestling is a funny team sport. Take care of what you can take care of. Do your part. 
and let the other guys do their part. And if everybody does, does their job, you know what? You're going to be in a good place at the end of the day. I'll tell you another thing, too. This team has always been good, great, when they get ready to go. And I'm talking about taking care of the things um, that they need to take care of as far as that ready state of mind that I'm talking about. And when our guys focus on that type of stuff, pretty good team we got. Thanks, Tom. Try not to get snowed in out there in Iowa City. All right, Ross, wrap us up. Thanks. Yo, uh, Tom, you know, at the Soldier Salute, you kind of said Caleb Rachi, you know, made his statement that he wanted to be the starting guy at 149. So now that he's made that statement, you know, that he's he wants to be the guy, you know, what are you telling him to, you know, make that step forward and now, if you are the guy in the lineup, you know, taking control of that opportunity, I guess. Do what you do best. Everything that I just talked about is is um, how experienced wrestlers march, how wrestlers march at this level. You go out, you do what you do best, control what you can control, and put points on the board and have fun in your own way, whatever and however you define having fun, go do it. Um, there's, no, there, there's no need to be uptight about this opportunity. There's no need to worry about, you know, what, what does the coaching staff think or what do the fans think or it doesn't matter. Go out and do what you do best. Um, don't look over your shoulder. I mean, it's all good. Just go out there, relax, and do what you do best. And the thing is, is these guys have been doing that for a long, long time. They know how to do it. Just go do it. Thanks, Tom. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you very much.